Hello and welcome to Transports Fever 2, the second in the Transports Fever games and the third in the what we could call the Fever series by Urban Games. This game comes out on the 11th of December, but uh, I've been given permission to make some videos nice and early along with a few other content creators. So you guys get to see a lot of your favorite content creators, hopefully of which I am one. And if I'm not, well, I guess I'll uh, just try harder. But you'll hopefully see a lot of your favorite content creators making videos on Transport Fever, or Transport Fever 2 should I say, and showing you what is different and what has changed. For my part, I will be starting this Series 1, and of course I will be doing multiple series on Transport Fever 2, but in Series 1 we'll have no mods, and we are just going to play it vanilla, see what, what it's like, get used to things, understand things, get used to the differences between this or this and Transport Fever, get used to the new interface, show you guys the best ways of doing things as far as I can find, so the best ways of making money, efficient routes, um, laying track, any other things like that, and also show you guys this. So we're going to start right now with this, and this is how we create a new game in Transport Fever 2. So no longer do we have a seed and then we just start the game and we don't know what we're going to get. This time we know what we're going to get because it allows us to customize certain things. You can see here on create new game. So all I did was create uh, press free game and you can see it generates a map. We can check the hilliness of it. So what's the mountain regions going to be like or whether we have mountain regions. You can see if I bring that up, you can already see where the mountains are. So we've got very mountainous terrain. Or we can check, we can change the amount of water on such a terrain. Or the amount of forestry on such a, such a terrain. So you can see that we've got that. If I was to generate random seeds, you can see that we've got, well, if you look at that, that's just a whole bunch of tributaries. And uh, this is looking like some sort of delta, actually. Looks like the end of a river, although that should be a lot bigger. But that's that's quite interesting. That's quite interesting as well. So yes, very, very nice all the way through. But this is what you can do with this. You can also change the size of the map. You can change the ratio of the map. How many towns are going to be on the map? So you can see here 25 towns. If we go to high, I think it's 20 towns for high. There you go, 20. So you'll have 15 and 10. So we are going to go for very high. Industry-wise, we're going to make it a little bit difficult for ourselves. We're going to go for low on the industries, which is going to be 81. Very high, on the other hand. I'm assuming it's going to give us well in excess of 100? 115, probably? Probably 115, maybe? 203, never mind. We are not going for 203 industries, that's for sure. I wasn't thinking that's what we're going to get. But I am going to not be using the temperate one. Now you're probably wondering why. Well, last time, when I started Transport Fever, that was the kind of style that I had. We're now going to go for this one. So we're going to have canyons, mesas, ridges, of course, water and some sort of forest. I've already got my map, so I am going to jump straight into that in a moment. But I'm just going to show you what you can do with this. So you can see here if we increase the number of mesas or increase the mesa ratio, you'll see that more mesas should develop. There you go. In fact, most of this map is now Mesa. If we increase the ridges, you'll see we should have a lot more in the way of ridge lines. Anytime now. Oh, you can see them all here. All along there, all there. In fact, everywhere. Drop the number of forests, so on and so forth. And on Tropical, we can mess around with islands. But like I said, we're going for this one. I shall load into the map and let's get started with Transport Fever 2. So here we are in Transports Fever 2. I forgot to um I forgot to pause this. I left it playing. So unfortunately we're on January 26th instead of January the 1st. But here is our map. You can see that we have some canyons. Uh, we've got canyons along here actually. We've got a little bit of canyon. We've got some canyons there, a little bit of a canyon there, and some canyons going over there. We have a little bit in the way of Mesa. You see there's one Mesa right there. 
got some ridges over here that's actually quite nice we've got some ridge lines it looks like mountains but not quite large enough in that sense a little bit more in the way of mesa here and here and probably some more up north in fact we have yep there and just a little bit that's more like a ridge line so there we go that's what we have in in this map now it's going to be interesting because I've never done an American map like this before. Um, I did the Great Lakes series on Transports Fever, the original Transports Fever, but, but certainly not, not like this, but we are going to be using all American machines. And let's, let's see what we can do. So first of all, let's get ourselves acquainted with this interface. What do we have? Well, starting from the top over here, we've got our warnings. This is, a, this is no longer a, an opaque triangular shape. This is a nice round circle, which is easy. We've got our menus up here. You click that, it actually goes into this, which is interesting. I would have preferred it down the side, but that's that's absolutely fine. We'll go into the layers in a moment. Let's have a look at the bottom here. This is our account. We can actually click on this and get more, more information. So this is our finances. We've got here, we've got context help, which just allows you to, I suppose it, you press that and you click on something and it tells you what it does. I'm not actually going to be using that. We have our earnings here. Now, this one's interesting. I'm not I'm not quite sure how this works. I think it just works in total. So everything you you're you're spending on within maybe within a year or something or every month. I think that's what that's what it might be doing. I'm not 100% sure. We're going to find out as time goes on. We've also got total passengers transported and total units of cargo transported which is a, an odd one but uh, there we go along the bottom we also have the camera tool which I enabled I'll show you how to use that we've got our music player down there we've got our standard pause and three speeds of play and then we've got uh, the dates now date speed this is something we can drop so I'm actually going to bring this down to a quarter because I find I find that this goes rather fast so I'm actually going to make that slower we used to need a mod to do that it seems like we no longer need a mod to do such a thing we then have all our industry statistics so requirements and products and their production rates and you can put you know you can do whatever you want with those we have our town statistics size we'll be talking about growth and the cargo we'll also be talking about how the cargo has changed for a town we have station statistics at the moment nothing we have our vehicle statistics at the moment nothing and we have line statistics now line statistics is different from the line manager the line manager here allows us to create a line and we can see what's going on on that line the line statistics allows us to see what vehicles are on the line what cargo they're carrying the frequency the rates and the amount of profit or loss that that line is making we have the standard bulldozer terrain features we have our terrain tools of course now, I, I, I'm not particularly keen on the this this color for this but there we go there's our there's our uh, brushes We've got three types of brushes a harder rounded brush a soft rounded brush or a square brush depending on what you want and of course you can rotate these as well so you can have some sort of rotation if you wanted to we've got flatten we've got smooth flatten raise lower and make a height map texture or use a height map texture we have paint tools as well so we can paint it as we want which is awesome and we've got assets as we normally have had before so we've still got uh, these in, in their same places and of course we've got our various options up here so you've got your trees your rocks and uh, miscellaneous assets so as mods come in these will probably increase let's not touch any of that we've then got our road uh, road tools railway tools waterway tools and airway tools so we can get uh, vehicles from here and lay in our streets and bus stations and all that kind of stuff railway stations tracks signals all that goes in there ships docks ports and the like go there and of course airports and aircraft go on this one and then over here we have our vehicle manager which allows us to buy vehicles now I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work so it buys a vehicle I don't know which depot it would put it to but we are going to work on that uh, as time goes on so that's that part of the interface the next part of the interface I need to show you guys is these data layers up here so these replace some of the small data layers that used to come up over here in transports fever where we had contour lines navigable waters and 
track speed. I think those were the three that we had. We now have far more. So we have our contour lines as usual. And you can see that it actually gives us color as well to help us uh, to help us determine how high something is, which is uh, actually quite useful. So it gives us a gives us a fair idea as to what the heights are of certain of certain places. As you can see here, you see that difference is quite quite significant as it goes up, and it will normally be around the hard contours. So if there was another hard contour here, this this would change color and show that the the mountainous region is getting a lot higher. We then have nav navigable waters as usual. You can see that uh, that that works just as it used to all the time. The green is slightly brighter. I will say that the green is slightly brighter. We then have this one. This is different land use. So for example, let's pop into Concord where we're going to start. Land use uh, has residential, commercial, and industrial, but also levels of it. So as we get higher ri high rise buildings or larger buildings, the levels are going to change. So it is going to get darker. That's something we need to get used to. And that's going to affect the kind of passengers that use it, the number of passengers that use it, and the demands of that particular uh, industry or commercial building or residential building. We also have track speed limits. This is uh, what we've had before. That's normal. We have destinations. Now, I'm not entirely sure how the destinations ones destination ones work i believe that's actually saying that there are two people who are somewhat heading in that direction in fact let's have a look yes there are two people on this part of on this no well there's two there well it's me it means something it, it certainly means something and of course we need to look but we need to be working on public transport and private transport is is the, the people themselves. I think it's where they're going. We then have cargo. This tells us who needs what cargo and the commercial supply, industrial supply and what it's like. So you can see at the moment we have fairly low supply on both of these but that will grow come time. Stations, we also have station crowding so we need to be now be aware as to how busy a station is getting. We have street traffic which as you can see We've got a lot of these play around over here. Now, I don't know exactly how this is going to work. Ah, okay. I've just I've just uh, taken over something. I'm assuming I can take over these things. Yes, I'm assuming I can take over these things and then be able to adjust them, change them, and add in traffic lights and, and the likes. We then have emissions. This one's going to be quite in interesting. I don't know exactly how it works, but we are going to find out. I do know that emissions are dynamic, so that when when you do have, let's say, a train going past, if a train's not been around for a long time, the emissions will die off a little bit. So we do need to be aware of this, and I believe it's the residential areas which are highlighted here that have most emission concerns. And then we've got our HUD icon filters, which used to be up at the top. And that's everything on the data layer, so I think we should get started. Let's zoom out and have a look at this section of map because this is where I'm starting. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start with a freight route. And for those people who are new to Transport Fever, what the idea is of the game is to make the most efficient and most profitable transport empire you can make. So that means passengers and freight transport using roadways, railways, waterways and airways. A lot of us who have been playing since the train fever days tend to pick railways. We're good with railways, we know how they work. In the last two series or last three series that I've done, primarily I worked on railways and roadways. I did a little bit on airways in season two of Transport Fever. I haven't touched it in season three because that was just a waiting season. And I cannot remember touching it in season one either. So I did do a little bit in season two. In this one, we're going to be again focusing on roadways and railways. But maybe later on in this series, we'll be looking for, yeah, we'll pro probably be looking for uh, airways too. Also, little Easter egg. 
Every time you look at these, they, they say something. So this one says something mysterious. If we find another lot, I'm pretty sure they'll say something else. Anyway, that's enough of that. We need to look at what we're going to do. Now, for those people who have played Transport Fever, these have now changed. These have now changed. Instead of having six that we have to look after, we only have two. So we used to have machines, tools, uh, it wasn't six, was it? It was nine. Machines, tools, goods, um, fuel, construction components, food. Oh no, that was, that was it. Those, it was those six, as well as getting our passenger network. Now we're down to two. However, different cities have different ones. So you can see here we have food and I think that's machines. Yes. Over there we have tools and construction components. There we have um, goods and construction components. Tools and fuel. Goods and machines. Goods and fuel. Uh, what else do we have here? Machines and tools. That's something Detroit was good at in one of the in this uh, second series that I was doing in Transport Fever, and so on and so forth. So we don't have to worry about a huge amount here. However, what we do have to look at now is target population. This this will glitch. I'm sure they'll fix that. Target population. If we look after this, it will grow. If not, it will start shrinking. So initially it was 77. It's now at 83. So it's stable at, or it's currently stable at 83. We'll see plus and minus if it's if it's increasing or decreasing. Target population is 84, provided it stays like this. If we start improving this, it will grow. I want Concord to become my capital. I don't know whether it's going to work, but I am going to try. And the easiest way to start for me is going to be doing this. We have a route that could go down here and then trucks that could go into Concord to deliver uh, deliver some food. Now looking at this we could take trucks but to do that we would need to perhaps you know create create a road like that and as you can see that's going to cost us a good half a million that's going to cost us half a million. Why do that when we could potentially pop down railways? Which will be actually cheaper. We could pop down a railway and that would be cheaper. So that's the idea. We're going to pop down a railway, we're going to get a train, a locomotive going across and we're going to have a train deliver goods here and then we'll go, obviously the train will go back and forth, and then we'll have trucks going from there into Concord. So that's the plan. And that's what I'm going to do. This is how I would start uh, a series or a, a build. First things first, I need to put down a station. So we're going to go for a cargo station. Now these are modular, so they can change uh, however. They can change in any which way. What I am tempted to do is to use this one. I'm actually tempted to use this kind of station. And the reason I'm tempted to use this kind of station... Well, this actually, this isn't going to work, is it? There, it, well, it would work if I did that, which makes it kind of useless. Never mind. I'm not going to use that kind of station. I'm going to use this kind of station. And I am going to drop the size of it because, well, we're not going to be able to carry many goods regardless. So I don't need to worry about that. And in addition to that, I would like the station to be sort of on this corner. Like this. The stations have changed. They no longer... Uh, they no no longer need to just be connected to a road like they used to in Transport Fever 1. What you have is they have little paths as you can see that have just popped up. So I'm going to pop this one in there. I'm just looking for the cheapest potential place. About there looks cheap or cheapish. 
we're just going to put in a single platform station right now and because it's modular we could do what we wanted to it as as time comes on and you can see here that it actually has the name of the station on there now i'm not going to call this concord station this is going to be called concord food terminal and it should change the name there you go concord food terminal also it's really annoying me that concord doesn't have an e there even though i know that's how it's actually spelled in english but never mind right over here over here we can put the station i suppose we could put it right here that would be a decent place to put the station we don't want to remove the fields but ah now you see now we have a different problem the problem is is that this is going to dig into the ground quite significantly so the alternative is to either move the station out a little bit where it will be cheaper which I think is potentially a better idea I think that's a better idea so I'm going to do that in fact there is no general alternative then that's what we're going to do so this station can sit quite nicely uh, there I suppose there we go slightly slight hill but what we're going to do is we're also going to use the terrain tools as a soft brush just bring this up there we go I'm very particular when it comes to things looking right that's as right as we're going to get good okay now all we need to do is we need to connect that with that let's find out how much that's going to cost the way i normally do this is i will start off by just doing a straight track and figuring out where does it collide and what what kind of cost are we looking at half a million half a million we have a collision down here because of the because of the road that's nice though if it can pull that off if it manages to pull that off that is very american very american if it can pull that off what i would like to do i would like to do this and then try it this is going to cost me. It's most certainly going to cost me. But in the way this the way this is panning out, that's a very American style uh, crossing. Excuse me, I just had to cough don't know what happened in fact I'm, I think I'm gonna have another one right now it's warning me up there because I have a main connection missing what I need to do is I need to see if there's a better way of doing this it's always good because you do need to try and save money but I, I have a feeling this is this is the best way of doing this entire track so, to, to actually progress the series quickly, I am going to take that. There we go. Done. So that track is now in. We have paid for it. And now what I need to do is ensure that this main connection is put back in place. You can see that's going to cost. What we need to do is we need to ensure this can and will lift oh that's horrible okay um well, you see that 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 provides a bit of an issue at least for now I mean, it, to be completely honest, it could, they could very well do this. It, it goes down a hill because of the train track. In fact, I've seen, I've seen roads like this. 
that go down and then back up. So we're going to we're going to take it. Here we go. That's now in. Now we could change the type of rail, railway crossing if there was another type, but we don't have any at the moment. So there's our first route. It's in, and we just need to work out what we need to do beyond this. We have that connected to that. Great. The next thing we need to do is we need a truck depot because we need to connect this over to this. So that's what we're going to do next. And in order to do that, we're going to go to the road tool, and then we're going to go to buildings and build a modular truck station. So this is new, modular stations, very new, new concept. And the modular station is going to be built, it doesn't need to be too big, but it, it does need to sort of look nice. There we go. It's going to be a small modular station, and I'm going to build it like that. So that is our truck station. Fantastic. Unfortunately it doesn't look, I wish it could look old, but, but it doesn't. And you can see here we could we could create more cargo platforms and whatnot. If, uh, if we wanted to. Right, so now that we've got that we need a unload point over here. Now we don't need to load up any more um, in the way of tools or food over here, sorry, machines or food. We have nothing to pick up here, so instead of creating a truck station, we just build in a truck unload stop. Now if we have a look at this, the food is all concentrated here, so what would be ideal is to stick the truck stop there. So that way, well, it covers the entire city, but for now, it will be focused around there. And as you can see, we still have a lot of money left over. Now I'm playing this on medium difficulty. No doubt things are going to get harder. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a depot, both for the railway and the road. The road depot I'm going to create in the city of Concord itself. I'm going to create it uh, right here actually. There we go. There's our road depot. It's actually, uh, you can actually look through it, it seems, which is, yep, you can actually, yep, definitely see through that. Something you never used to be able to do, but you can now. So there we go, there's our road depot. Looks good. From here, we'll be able to buy all our vehicles that are going to run on the route. However, we don't need to do that just yet, because we need to, first of all, get ourselves a railway depot. So we're going to build up a railway depot. Now the railway depot, I'm going to put... This is going to be interesting. I'm actually going to put the railway depot on this side. But you can see that... Oops. If I press the M and N keys to rotate, which is uh, something that's carried over from the other transport FIFA, I have to try and make this as close as possible in order to have the height the same. Or what I could do is go over here and press flatten and raise the ground around this area to match it. So now that it's the same height as the track or the track surface, we should be able to pop the depot in and it will give us the right height. So that's still a slightly curved track. I'm going to pop the depot in there. 18,000 for a depot. And then all we need to do is connect it up and we are ready to go. There it is. Perfect. We are now ready to go. And you can see that the railway is connected nicely. It does have a slight drop, just a very slight drop, which is annoying, but there's nothing I can do about that for, for some reason. I thought I had it lined up, apparently not quite. So this is the Concord Depot. Now imagine if the city of Concord does build out over here, it's going to look really, really good. Now that we've done that, we need to set up lines. So all the infrastructure is now in place. We've got depots to build, to uh, create vehicles. We've got the stations. We've got, uh, we've got the lines itself, the railway, the railway itself, the roads. We now need to tell it the lines in terms of where does it need to go 
to do what. So we press this for line manager, new line, and I'm going to create two lines. The first one I'm going to call FRRW, that's the railway one, and I'm going to call it uh, Concord. Oh, I spell Concord with there you go, I spell Concord with it. Uh, Concord Farming Farms. Concord Farms. Yeah, let's do let's do that. That one is going to run from there to there. There we go. Now we can configure this, but at this point in time there's no point as configuring it because we're only going to have grain from there and we're only going to have food over here. As a matter of fact, all we need to do really is to say just don't load anything here. But we're not going to worry about that just yet. I'm going to rename Concord North though. So that's one route done. Rename Concord North to Concord Farms. Farm. Concord Farm. There we go. Okay, one route done. Second route, we need to create from here to this drop-off point here. And you can see they'll do a they'll do a UE once they're done. And I'm going to call this route F R R D for road. I'm going to call it Concord Food. There we go. Now both routes are going to be yellow that's going to be the color of my food routes. Now we used to have more colors available in Transport Fever. I hope they add more colors because I, I used to use a lot. I'm pretty sure we had more colors available. So I definitely used to use more colors. Either that or they've changed the palette and I'm getting this confused. We definitely had darker, we had many shades of red. So yeah, anyway. So that's what we now have. That's ready. All we now need to do Get, get the ball rolling we have 4 million I am going to point out right now that we are going to need more than a single line I can tell you that already because of the amount of food that's going to run so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right here expand this like that and let's see how much this costs 228 that's not too bad that is not too bad we are going to double track it and then hook it in over here there we go okay now the only thing that I have to note and this is something that I'm very unused to doing we're going to have trains running on the right so I have to be very wary of this which means that the signals must be uh, signals over here the signals must be on this side this is something very alien to me so I'm going to start by popping in two signals one there and one there okay this is very alien to me I'm then going to pop in another set of signals uh, halfway along so I'd say about here. See, you can see where I'm naturally trying to put the signals. My brain is just telling me to put it on this side. There we go. So what that's going to allow me to do is run a maximum of four trains efficiently on this route. So we'll have, we should have one in this section or a block. We'll have one in this block, one in this block and one in this block. That's great. Now we need to actually get the trains. So let's have a look at what's available for us. We can press buy vehicles here. Ah, that's how you do it. That goes to the vehicle manager and you can just click on that. Clever. Okay. We have the Baldwin six wheel, which has a top speed of 25 miles per hour. Very good. And then we have a gondola which looks like that's the one we want to carry the grain. So different ones will carry different things. So we'll add in a six wheel and what do these gondolas carry? Seven. Let's go for, uh, how much are they? 200 each. That's going to make a very, 
very expensive train. If we buy three of those, that's going to eat into most of our budget. Okay. And if we buy four, that's everything basically. And we're not going to have enough money to... Okay, we're going to buy three. We're going to buy three of these. And we're going to send them out on the route. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the road vehicles out as well and see what happens. Three of them have been bought. They are now on the Concord Farm route. Similarly, we now have buy vehicles here. American horse-drawn carriage. We're going to buy buy 10 of them. Uh, how far do they have to go? That's a, not that much of a distance, but I think 15 might be better. 15 bought and all of them so what we do is we can we can change the color of them if we wanted to so we could select them all change the color in fact I will I'll turn them all yellow we'll send them on Concord food fantastic okay now what I do want to do here is because I quite like taking photographs I'm going to go into the camera at all. I'm going to go for a 35 mil. There we go. I'm going to get rid of that. Bring that down. And make this look quite good if I can. Okay. Let's hope this ends up being the thumbnail for the episode. A long episode, but that's just because it is episode one. Here we go. Now you're going to see we are going to lose money heavily at the start. That's a very, very smoky. That is a very smoky set of glasses. As a matter of fact, let me just sit like this and watch it. There you go. Let's watch all three exits. Well, that one's not going to go out for a while. Of course it's not, because we have to wait. Who are you? Who are you and what do you want? Uh, are you the same... Are you the same cranes? Where, where have you gone? Hey, wh where have you gone? I've lost them. Anybody see them? Oh, there they are. What do they say? Easter egg. They just say Easter egg. Okay, fantastic. Right, so here we go. We're now going to lose a massive amount of money. However, you can see right here already we have 20 waiting to be transported, which means that on this side, this food processing plant is waiting to actually have grain transported to it so it can convert it into food to give food to the town of Concord. Here are all the wagons of ours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen wagons. Fantastic. You can see a coal mine over there. Who does that belong to? Norwalk. Norwalk? Norwalk, who's that? There is a lot of grain waiting here already. What, how much is that? 33 waiting already. Not, not great. 33 and this can only take 21. This can only take 21. Here comes the, here comes the second train though. Here comes the second train. 
so we've got a total of 63 that can be transported here. Yeah, we've got a total of 63. All of those are getting there right now. Now, this is going to be, at the moment, this is, this is not going to be providing a, a good turnaround. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to move a few of them and send them back. If you're wondering why I'm doing this, essentially I'm just spacing them out a little bit so that they've got, so you've got a, a sort of a more constant flow. There goes the third train. That one's actually picked up the initial, initial load. There it goes. Of course, with only 740 in the account, we need to make sure that this makes money and as soon as as soon as this first one's done that's when uh, that's when we shall end this episode also this is a good time to show you the emissions so if we now go into emissions you can see right there you can see how the emissions are around the train but also where the train's been there are emissions but not as many See, there aren't as many emissions so this has left a trail of emissions that's left a trail of emissions that's left a trail of emissions but you will see that in the middle it's starting to narrow because the two trains are gone and that's how it works that's that's how the emissions work which is pretty cool you can actually see it tapering off there as well right there now what I'll do is I will fast forward this So we can we can see if this actually works. That's a lot of black smoke though. I will say that. And you can see our earnings at the moment, 647. Because that's what we've got left. We started with 5 million. We haven't earned anything aside from that initial 5 million. And here comes the first delivery. Let's find out how much money this one brings in for us. And this is going to be a telling factor as to what we've got. So, so far, this has lost 75,000. If this can make more than 75,000 on its delivery, we're in profit. It made 126,000. We're in profit. Now, we just need to make sure that on its second run back, it is not 75,000 down already. And that's, that's essentially the idea of transport fever. In the next episode, we are going to try and make this more efficient. You can see here, it's got 13 stored. It's going to end up eating through that pretty quickly. So we are going to try and find a way to make this line more efficient and figure out how to get the food over to the food processing plant quicker and get Concord growing. So this is the plan. The plan is to make this our capital city. As a matter of fact, before we end, I know that we can create headquarters. I'm going to build headquarters in Concord. Uh, where in Concord am I going to build the headquarters? Where in Concord should I build it? Right next to the depot. Why not? First depot, headquarters. I think it's supposed to be the other way, but okay. My mistake. Thank you very much for watching, please remember to hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to the channel for more videos on Transport Fever 2, leave a comment in the comments box below letting me know what you think, I'm going to have to relocate that aren't I? We'll build it, I know what we'll do, let's relocate it here, let's, let's relocate it here, why is it doing this to me though, I don't want that, I want it to be nice and low, behind the depot. Never mind, I'll fix that. I will fix that. Yeah, like I said, like, comment, subscribe with the notification bell for more episodes of Transport Fever 2 to be delivered right to your mailbox. Also, you can support me on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash ecgadget, and you can find me on social media at ecgadgetlp for both Twitter and Instagram. That's all from me. 
this thing's just delivered something. 30 in profit? Not great. Here comes another one. 95 down. Ooh, that's not going to be in much profit at all. Well, anyway, that's all from me. I'll see you guys next time in Transport Fever 2.